the distributive property of multiplication over addition. What this property states is if you have a set of parentheses and you have a couple numbers inside, let's say 2 plus 3, and then you multiply that, this term, inside the parentheses by a number, let's say 4, the distributive property says you have to multiply the 4 times 2 and then also multiply 4 times 3. And you do that in order to get rid of the parentheses. So what that looks like is the 4 times 2 and then plus 4 times 3. And that's going to equal 8 plus 4 times 3 is 12. And it'll give you 20. Now at first glance, you'll probably wonder why are we doing this? Why bother with multiplying the 4 times the 2 and then the 4 times the 3? Why don't you just why don't you just add the 2 and the 3 inside the parentheses first and then do the multiplication? That's what we normally do when you use the order of operations. So if you do it that way, you'll get the same answer. So in this case, it'll be 2 plus 3, which is 5, and then do five, 4 times 5, which is 20. So you'll get the same answer. But there's a reason why we're learning the distributive property, and you'll see that that reason more clearly once we start using variables, and then at some point we're actually going to reverse the process, and that's called factoring. So in, in a future video we'll learn about factoring, but for this one you just have to understand the concept of the distributive property. So let's do a couple examples. Let's do I want to distribute the 4, and let's throw in some variables here. We'll do x plus y. So we're going to use the distributive property of multiplication over addition to distribute the 4 into the x and the y. So we have to multiply the 4 times the x, and then the 4 times the y, and we'll still add those two terms together. So 4 times x will give you 4x. Then you have the addition. And 4 times y will give you 4y. And that's using the distributive property. Now if they told you that x equals 2 and y equals 3, then you can evaluate it at this point. And it would be 4 times x, which is 2 plus 4 times y, which is 3. So you would get 8 plus 12, which equals 20. So you see in this, this is the same exact problem that we, that we did at first, only we did it with variables now, and then we substituted in the 2 and the 3, and then we can evaluate it from there. So now just just uh, jump ahead, let's look at, at the reverse, the reverse of the distributive property, which is factoring. Factoring. And that's when you start with, with an expression, and then you want to factor something out of that expression. So an example might be, 3x plus 3y. And I want to factor this. I want to factor a 3 out of each of these terms. So they both have a 3 in common. They're both being multiplied by a 3. But we're going to do now the reverse of the distributive property. And we're going to factor a 3 out. So if we pull a 3 out of each term, we'll put the 3 out front. And then we'll add parentheses. And then you look at the first term here. It's 3x, 3x. 
and we factor out a 3. So 3x divided by 3 divided by 3 will just give us an x. So we write that in the parentheses. And then a 3y divided by 3 will just give us a y. The 3's cancel out, and you'll have a y. And that's what we did here. We factored out a 3. And then if you, you reverse that again and did the distributive property, then you'll end up with, with our initial expression. So you'd have 3 times x, which would give you the 3x, and then 3 times y, which would give you the 3y. But that's, that's the main reason why we want to learn the, the distributive property, is so that we can then reverse it and do factoring. Okay, in the next video, we'll, we'll do some more examples using the distributive property and maybe throw in some factoring as well.